I'm doing this a little earlier than usual, so if you hear any barking, this is the culprit. My little dog, Max. It's time of day he likes to bark. Let's hope for the best. And good morning. Good to see you today. My name is Pastor David Shepherd from the Heart for God Worship Center here in Brooksville, Florida. Doing another online sermon from the book of Acts. And today we're going to be in the book of Acts chapter 20. And this is going to be Paul's farewell address. Now the Apostle Paul has been a central figure in the book of Acts. He was going all around Israel and Turkey and Greece and preaching the gospel, establishing churches. In fact, he traveled approximately 10,000 miles during a 30-year period. That was a lot of walking. That's mainly what they did in those days was walk, unless they were rich enough to have a, a donkey to ride. But mainly he was walking. Sometimes he'd go on, on boat. He traveled over 10,000 miles for 30 years. That's a lot of dedication. A lot of things happened to him while he was traveling. He got abused a lot. He got arrested a lot. He got tortured a lot. He got imprisoned a lot, rejected a lot. But he also had a lot of really great things happen. Many people came to know the Lord through his ministry. Many churches were established. The world was changed through, through the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul. I hope today my life can help to change the lives of others in a very small way at least. In fact, when Paul was writing a letter to the Corinthians, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25 through 27, he describes some of the things that he had been through. Three times I was whipped by the Romans, and once I was stoned. I have been in three shipwrecks, and once I spent 24 hours in the water. In my many travels, I have been in danger from floods and from robbers, in danger from my own people and from Gentiles. There have been dangers in the cities, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the high seas, and dangers from false friends. There have been work and toil. Often I have gone without sleep. I have been hungry and thirsty. I have often been without enough food, shelter, or clothing. So there's Paul writing a letter later in his life, describing some of the things that he'd been through. Now, the point we're coming to in this story of Paul's life, he's completed most of his work, his missionary work, and now he's going to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem can be a scary place to go. Paul knew if he went to Jerusalem, he would probably be arrested. There was a plot to kill him, in place at the time. He knew he might end up dead, whipped or tortured in some way, imprisoned. He knew that very difficult things awaited him if he went to Jerusalem. His friends told him, don't go to Jerusalem because you're going to be bound and arrested and put to death. He's kind of following the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus went to Jerusalem at a time when it was a very scary thing to do. He, he was risking his life, but Jesus knew this ahead of time. Jesus knew what awaited him in Jerusalem, which was arrest, torture, and death on the cross. But Jesus went willingly to Jerusalem to lay down his life for us. Paul, following in the footsteps of Jesus, also went willingly to Jerusalem willing to lay down his life for the Lord. Now I'm going to be in chapter 20, and I'm going to read quite a bit, um, and then I'll explain it a little more organized. Hope it's not too much reading. Hope you don't lose attention. But it is the Word of God, so it has certain power to it. Now this is Paul speaking to the Ephesian elders. The elders were like the Bible teachers, the pastors, the leaders of the church. 
and they were from the city of Ephesus, one of the main places where Paul spent a lot of time and had built up a strong church. And here's what he says to the Ephesian elders at the time he's getting ready to go to Jerusalem to end his ministry of preaching um, around Asia and Europe and face uncertain results. Now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when the elders of the church at Ephesus came to him, this is what he said. You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, in teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. For I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and finish the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of you all, for I do not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Now this message was to the elders. I take this as a message to myself, not just because I'm old, but because God has called me into ministry. And I know it's a big part of my life to take care of myself, to watch over myself, to try to be a good Christian, try to be a good person, and stay in the word of God and stay in prayer and try to stay close to God so that I can help others, that I can be an overseer and a shepherd to others. And there's many people through our Hearts for God Church that I have to spend time with um, during difficult times, encourage them to do right and to do good, to follow the teachings of Jesus, to have faith and hope in the Lord. So these words I take personally to myself. I know that after my departure, said Paul, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, false teachers, false preachers. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish you, everyone, with tears. Paul was a very emotional person. He had tears many times in the Bible. I can relate to that because I'm a very emotional if I'm preaching in front of a live audience, most of the time I'll cry during the sermons. Not as much when I'm speaking to a camera, but if you were here right now, I'd probably be crying. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not see night or day to admonish you, everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among those who are sanctified. So he just basically tell them, I'm leaving, you're never going to see me again, you're on your own now. I've spoon fed you, I've raised you up from baby Christians, you're strong now, you know the word of God, you know the will of God, and it's not on my shoulders anymore. You're on your own. Take care of yourselves, take care of your flock, your fellow Christians. And put God first in your lives. Move ahead without me. Your religion shall be based on a man, but on God relationship with God, not with a man. Then Paul says, I coveted no one's silver or gold or, or apparel. He says silver, gold, and apparel in the same sentence. 
Um, and I've told you several times in our studies that in those days apparel, clothing, was very, very valuable, comparable to silver and gold. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my own necessities and those who were with me. So Paul didn't always get the offerings and the support from the people that Jesus taught his disciples should get. And that the book of Acts in the early chapters teaches us we should support our pastors and Bible teachers financially. Paul wasn't getting that support sometimes. He had to work with his own hands. He was a tent maker. And he worked and supported himself when he needed to, to keep the gospel going. And that sits home with me because I'm the same way. Um, I don't get support from my church. I just work my job and support myself. And then I, I give my time freely as the Lord allows. And then Paul says, in all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak. And remember the, Lord's of Jesus, the words of the Lord Jesus himself. He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And everybody should be giving. Everybody should be giving their time, their effort, their, their money to help others. The Bible says we should help the hungry, the thirsty, the imprisoned, the poor. Here Paul's making this farewell address. He's saying the things that are most important to him, the things that he considers the most important. For a leader of the church or a dedicated Christian to understand, and one of those things is to help the weak, to help the poor, to give and help others. Jesus taught this, Paul taught this, the early church lived this out, and the entire Bible cover to cover teaches this principle of helping the needy, helping the poor, helping the weak. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Everybody knows that saying, but how often do we put it into practice? We're also eager to receive, receive money, receive possessions, receive good things, but how often do we, we give? And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Prayer. Always a lot of communal prayer in the book of Acts. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken that they would never see his face again. And they accompanied him to his ship. People were so sad. They, they loved Paul. He had done so much for them. He had sacrificed so much for them. They understood this. They recognized this. That's one of the nice things about being a minister. People do appreciate what you do for them. The time you give them, the support and comfort you bring them, the teaching of the word of God, and many times people have shared with me their appreciation for what I've done to help them. I hope that these videos are something that you appreciate, that help you. When you're a minister, you're basically a servant. You're there to minister to the needs of the world, the needs of others, and be a servant to all. Jesus was the greatest servant who ever lived. Paul was a great servant. I hope in some small way I can be a servant to you today. Now, when we're reading through all those verses, it's kind of jumbled, you know, went back and forth from one subject to another. So I kind of organized some of the, the thoughts and some of the ideas from these, these verses. The first idea is Paul's methods. His methods of preaching the gospel and dealing with people and how he did things. So here's some of the things I came up with of Paul's methods. One, he taught with humility and he taught with tears, which I take that to mean he was very sincere in what he was teaching. Paul taught in public places and in homes. See, in those days, they didn't have church buildings and budgets and all that sort of thing. He taught in people's homes. Churches met in homes. If you have a small church that meets in homes, you have a New Testament church. Paul also taught in public places. The town square, the Colosseums, the theaters, wherever he could get an audience. He would publicly preach the Word of God. That takes a lot of guts. Paul held nothing back in his teaching. He didn't try to sugarcoat it. He didn't try to make it easier to hear. He taught the Word of God. He taught the teachings of Jesus as they were, <clears throat> blunt and point blank, no matter if people want to hear it or not. I try to do that. He did manual labor to support his missionary team. He supported himself and his missionary team through his work. He thought his own life was worth nothing outside of doing the will of God. He was 100% focused. 
in fulfilling God's will for his life, 100%. How many of us today can say we're 100% focused on God's will for their lives? I don't think I could say that. Maybe you could. Think about that. What would it be like to be 100% focused on God's will for your life? Now the next category I came up with was Paul's message. What was he telling people? What was his message? One, he's telling people to repent of your sins. Leave your old life behind. Move into a new life. Turn around and go the other direction. Leave your sins behind you. Your sins hurt you. Your sins hurt others. Your sins bring you down. Sins destroy societies and nations. There's nothing good about sins. Whatever sins are in your life, you might be addicted to them, you might enjoy them, but I know in your heart of hearts there is no sin that you really wish was gone from your life. It's an ongoing process. I still have many sins in my life. And trust God to redeem me and free me from those sins. He taught we should believe in Jesus, who is our Lord. Now, if you believe in Jesus, that means he's alive. Paul was alive when Jesus was crucified and put in a grave. So Paul believed that Jesus resurrected from the dead and that Jesus sits at the right hand of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus sits at the right hand of God today. If anybody else tries to sit at the right hand of God, they are a false Christ, a pseudo-Christ. That was the great sin of Satan. Satan tried to usurp the seat, the mercy seat, the place where Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Satan wanted to be the most powerful being in heaven and sit at the right hand of God. He was trying to take the place of Jesus. If anyone claims to be at the right hand of God, they are being satanic and they are trying to take the place of Jesus to be worshiped and, and obeyed. But Jesus is our Lord. He is alive. He is divine. He is the Son of God. And Paul believed this. Paul also message was, know and obey the words of Jesus. You should know the words of Jesus. You should obey them. You need to study your Bible and do what Jesus tells us. Also, the church, which is this body of believers, not just a church or a denomination, but the body of all believers was paid for by the blood of God's own Son. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. You could be a part of his family, a part of his church. He taught the Holy Spirit communicates to us. In this, in this story, several times Paul said the, the Holy Spirit had told him what awaits him in Jerusalem. And in earlier chapters, the Holy Spirit told other people, friends of Paul's, what was going to await him in Jerusalem. So the Holy Spirit is real. He dwells in our hearts. He, we can feel his presence sometimes. The Holy Spirit can tell us things that we need to do. Now the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you the future of the world. He's not going to tell you what your friend needs to do. But the Holy Spirit will tell you what you need to do. And that's as far as it should go. Otherwise you end up with one of these uh, crazy cults or something where one person has so much Holy Spirit they're telling everybody else what God wants them to do. But you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you what you need to do. And the message that Paul was preaching was described as the gospel, which means good news. It's good news. It's not bad news. It's not like, you're going to go to hell and burn. No, it's God is full of mercy. God is full of love. God wants to forgive you. He gave his son, shed his blood for your forgiveness of your sins. You have eternal life with God awaiting you if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And that is good news. This message is about the grace of God, which is the love and forgiveness of God. The message is about the kingdom of God, which is the whole sphere in heaven and earth where God's will is done, where God is obeyed and God is loved. That is the kingdom of God. The good news, he says, builds us up and blesses us. It is a blessing to be a Christian. It is a blessing to be committed to, to the Lord. It brings happiness. It brings fulfillment to our lives. And we must be givers. We must be givers who take care of the weak, said Paul. Now, Paul gave admonition to the elders. This I take personally, as I'm a, as I said, sort of an elder type person. I'm a shepherd. My last name's Shepherd, so if you call me Shepherd Shepherd instead of Pastor Shepherd, you could call me Shepherd Shepherd. That'd be kind of funny, but it might work. And here's what Paul said to the elders. Hey, I've been with you for three years teaching you. You can trust what I've taught you. Don't forget it. He says, you can't depend on me anymore. You are responsible for yourselves. You can't depend on another man. You have to depend on God. He said, keep watch over yourselves and over the flock, which is the church. It's interesting to keep watch over yourselves. 
Not like the pastor is not vulnerable. Pastors are often the worst person in the church. I've always had this saying, when you walk into a church, the greatest evil is the man standing behind the pulpit. In my experience, that has often been the case. It's not always the case. But I've seen so much evil done by the men standing behind the pulpits. I promise to God and to you I will not be that kind of person. The Holy Spirit has placed these people in your care. I understand that. The people that are in my Heart for God church that I, I care for, I understand the Holy Spirit has placed them in my care, and I take that very seriously. He also said that the fierce wolves will come from within and with outside of the church. So people preaching false doctrines and trying to get power and money and whatever they're trying to accomplish, sex, whatever they're after, they're going to come from outside the church and attack, and they're going to come from inside the church and attack. So you need to be careful, be discerning. He also said that God will take care of you. Don't worry, God will take care of you. And that last little list is Paul's theology. There's a lot of theology in this little farewell address. Paul obviously believed in the Trinity because he spoke very much of God, the Father. He spoke of Jesus Christ, and he spoke of the Holy Spirit, all three aspects of God. When you say the Lord Jesus Christ, which he does in this passage, the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord means he is God, Jesus means he's human, and Christ means he is the Messiah. Lord Jesus Christ, God, man, Messiah. Paul recognized that was true about Jesus. Also, he understood the, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, which implies his divinity. He understood the humanity of Jesus, the Messiahship. He really preached the atonement of sins through the shed blood of Jesus. It's through the shed blood of Jesus that our sins can be forgiven today. Your sins can be forgiven today. Put your faith in the blood of Jesus. He taught the resurrection and the eternal position of Jesus. Paul taught many times that not only did Jesus resurrect from the dead, but all people who are all going to die, all of them, all of us, are one day going to be resurrected from the dead and stand before God for judgment. He also taught people have free will and they can choose to follow God if they want to. And that salvation is a personal thing that we must individually accept. I hope today you've individually and personally put your faith in Jesus Christ. I hope you, you've asked him to forgive you of your sins. You've done your best to repent and turn and go another way. You allow the Holy Spirit to come dwell within your heart and you're trying to follow that spirit, trying to listen to that spirit. I hope you're spending time in prayer, not just you talking to God, but just sitting quietly, letting God talk to you. I hope that you're spending time in the Word of God. These words are powerful. It's a big Bible. It's a very powerful Bible. These are powerful words. It's almost like magic when you read these words. They just get into your spirit and they make you strong. Please study the Word of God. I hope today I've been of help to you. And I hope these words from the book of Acts, the words from the Apostle Paul, will change your life. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.